Praise the Lord. Good day. Welcome once again to this teens lesson. We once again thank the God of our Father for the grace and the opportunity to be here. And we also thank our spiritual father, Apostle T. Utapashi, for this platform to grow and to learn together. We'll start with the re a recap of the lesson points from last week. One, we talked about your identity in Christ, addressing two things God says about you as a person. Two, we said, God says you are the righteousness of God in Christ, meaning you have right standing with him, and it was not earned by you, but is based on the finished works of Jesus, not on your acts. Three, we lastly said, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that you were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Today, we are going to be talking about living by faith living by faith let's open our bibles to galatians 3 verse 11. galatians 3 verse 11. i'll be reading from the king james version i'll read but that no man is justified that word means made right with god or made righteousness made righteous but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. So it's saying, no man shall be justified by the law, but we are justified by accepting him who performed the perfection of the law. And that is Jesus. And we became the righteousness of God and it ends by saying the just shall live by faith so what is faith some of you might ask let's open our Bibles to Hebrews 11 verse 1 Hebrews 11 verse 1 I assume you are there so I'll read now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen I'll read again Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, what it's basically saying is that faith is the reality that underlies all outward manifestation. It is the reality that underlies all outward manifestation. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, meaning if you want to be a pilot, I have to see something today of where you are going. There is a positive correlation between your hope and your substance. You are the substance. What you do is the substance. Who you are today shows me who you are tomorrow. Who you hang out with today shows me who you are tomorrow. There is a correlation between your future and what you are doing today when you start from 8 to 12 midnight i have an idea of your future tomorrow similarly you can't say you want to be an actual actualist or somebody who is so good at statistics in insurance or any other field but not be doing meds today Similarly, you are doing geography, you are doing accounting, and you say, I want to be a physicist tomorrow. The substance is you. The substance of what you are doing today highlights what your hope is tomorrow. When I see the way you are dressing, it tells me where you are going. Our spiritual father always says, dress for your next post. Dress for success. Because, he's saying, the dress is the substance of where you are going, or what is your hope. When you don't dress well, we are not assured of a positive future. But when you dress well, we are assured of your next post, or we are assured of your next level in life. So, the substance that we see today is an assurance of the hope that you have tomorrow. 
It also says, it is the evidence of things not seen. So even now, when your parents see the way you are studying, they have already held, if you are studying from 8 to 12 and studying relentlessly, there is a way that you are doing your things that assures your parents of a Cambridge certificate with 15 A's at all level, with 20 points at A level. They already hold it before it is seen. They already have the evidence of the certificate before they have held it in their hands. And what is that evidence? That evidence is how you are doing what you are doing. So the way you are conducting yourself is revealing something of your future, is revealing something of what you already carry. The, wo the world, there is the physical world and there is the spiritual world. There is the unseen and there is the seen. What we have not seen has evidence in the physical and the physical evidence is you, is how you are conducting yourself. For example, last week we said you received Christ, you are a Christian team and when you received him, you were justified and when you were justified, you became the righteousness of God, meaning you had right standing with God. And when you have right standing with God, you now become the evidence. We never saw the right standing. We never saw Jesus. But we now see Jesus in you. We now have to see Jesus in you. We now have to see the righteousness of God in you. So we have to hold the evidence. You are how you go about your day, how you live your life. As God says, he says, the just, the righteous shall live by faith. They shall live by faith. Which means your everyday goings on, the way you brush your teeth should bring a soul to Christ. The way you carry yourself should draw people unto God. The way you dress should show people something of that which was unseen that you now have which is the righteousness of God in you. So you have something unseen, but the evidence of that something that is unseen is the righteousness of God in you. When you have bad conduct, you fail to obey your parents. When you are rude to your teachers, it still follows the same law. It is evidence of something unseen, but that something is not Christ in you. So the way you are behaving has something unseen behind it. When we look at you, do we see the righteousness of God in you? When we see the way you honor your teacher, do we see the righteousness of God in you? The way you listen to your parents and you honor them, do we see the righteousness of God in you? Do we see Jesus in you? So winning is not just about talking to someone and trying to convince them. Here, here even the Bible says, Wives, win over your husbands by your conduct. Win over your husbands by the fruits of your righteousness. Which means, there is something in the way you live, the way you do your things, that has the capacity to win over souls unto Christ. So the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. The made righteous shall live by faith. Let's open our Bibles again to Romans 1 verse 17. Romans 1 verse 17. I want you to, to, to look into something interesting that is rarely seen in the Bible. Let's open or read. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Who is the righteousness of God? The righteousness of God is me. Jesus in me. The righteousness of God is Jesus, but Jesus is in me. And my identity is 
the righteousness of God because he lives in me. And when God looks at me, he sees not me because I am dead. But the righteousness of God in me is the life in me. I am a new creature in Jesus. So, we are saying, for therein is me revealed from faith to faith. faith. There is the righteousness of God in me revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Which means, I'll show you maybe from a picture behind me. There is something called the revealing of righteousness. There's something called the revealing of righteousness from the righteousness of God. And it is revealed from faith to faith. Faith to faith. Faith to faith. So what are we saying? You were justified according to Galatians 3 verse 11. Then you moved into being the righteousness of God. Through not your works, but his works. Through Jesus, you became the righteousness of God, which is your identity, having him inside of you. And now God reveals his heart to those who have been made just, those who are now the righteousness of God, which is you and me. And when as he reveals his heart, he tells us how to live. His heart is now how the righteous, the redeemed of God, are to live. And he says, you are now to live from faith to faith. He doesn't say you, you should. He says you shall, which means the righteousness of God that you received has the inherent power to breed good fruit in your life, to breed that ability to live from faith to faith. It is the righteousness of God that now lives for you from faith to faith. Because you shall live it. Not you should, but you shall live it as soon as you become the righteousness of God. So, you move, you live from faith to faith. How do you live from faith to faith? It is as natural as breathing. It is as natural as eating. That's living. There is an act of faith and there is living by faith. Living by faith is as natural as the way you brush your teeth. The way you brush your teeth up and down, up and down, up and down. If you don't know this, that teeth are brushed up and down, it evidently only means one thing. You have never been to a dentist. So which means, when I see you, when I see the way you brush your teeth, I already know if you've been to the dentist, or you haven't been to the dentist. When I see your good behavior, I already know. Is Jesus in you? Do you have the righteousness of God? Because the Bible is saying, the revealing of righteousness is revealed by the just as they move from faith to faith. In another scripture, he says, we as beholding, as beholding Jesus, as in a mirror, are being changed from glory to glory. The more we focus on him, the more we move from faith to faith. Countless times you have gotten into a car. Countless times you have walked over a bridge. Are you, have you ever considered or even thought or has it ever come to your mind that it might not be able to hold your weight? No, you just get into the car and you trust and have faith in the car that it will take you from A to B without dropping you on the ground. That is living by faith. And God expects us to have faith, to live from one faith to another faith. As I walk, the way I walk should reflect the faith in me, should reflect the righteousness of God in me. The way I dress should reflect the righteousness of God in me. The way I do what I do, the way I smile, the way I react to situations, it should be natural to me because I have the righteousness of God. 
The Bible says in the book of Matthew, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. A good tree bears good fruit. So if your righteousness is the tree, then naturally you are born for good fruit. You have been born again to produce good fruit. Not because of you, but because of the tree. The verse is making it clear that it is the tree which determines the fruit, not the fruit determining the tree. So the righteousness of God in you determines the fruit that you have. So, again, I'll just point out one other verse. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews 10, verse 38. I'll close with that one. Hebrews 10, verse 38. It says, But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So, today, I'll leave you with a verse. Most likely you are asking, how do I now increase my faith? What do I do? What do I do for me also to reflect more of who he is? To reflect more of what is my hope. One, study. Do something that is closer to your dream, that is closer to your hope. Assess your hopes. If you want to be a pilot, look at the substance that you have at present. Two, the Bible says in the book of Joshua, the book of the law, study upon it day and night, day and night, meditate upon it, day and night, for it says in the book of John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, as you study, as you meditate upon scripture, you are taking in more of Jesus in you, more of the word in you, and as you take more of the word in you, it will overflow naturally into your actions. The more you do it, the more it overflows, the more you are filled up, and the more your actions reflect the righteousness of God. So next week, I would want to teach you a way of how to study a scripture. But this week, I'm going to leave you with this assignment. Psalm 91 verse 1. Remember, we have been taught this chapter. We have been advised to memorize it by our spiritual father. But today I'll leave you with one verse for you to ponder, to meditate, to say it to yourself, to read it again and again, to memorize it as you sleep, dream about it. When you go to sleep, say it over and over again. When you open your eyes, say it again and again. As you walk, say it to yourself. Let it penetrate deep inside of you. Reflect upon what it means. Look at the words and assess what they mean. As our Father has taught us, you read scripture word for word. Assess what it means to your life. And as you do, God is going to show up and is going to fill you up. And it will start overflowing in your actions. Keep on doing it day to day. So, if you have been with us and your heart was yearning to also be justified, to also be made the righteousness of God, you haven't had the opportunity to receive our Jesus, to receive the righteousness of God, and to embark on this journey, moving from faith to faith, living from faith to faith, highlighting and revealing the glory of the God in you. Then I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And with my mouth today, I declare that I am born again, I am saved, I am a child of God for all eternity in the name of Jesus. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. Join us again as we learn together next week. Thank you.